الحمد لله الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وصلواته وسلامه على من بعثه رحمه للعالمين على حبيبنا رسول الله رسول رب العالمين وعلى اله ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد في عباد الله ويا معشر المسلمين اوصيكم واوصي نفسي بتقوى الله في السر والعلانيه فان مخافه الله سبحانه وتعالى راس الحكمه وان المعصيه اساس البوار والهلاك الله says that permission has been granted to those who were oppressed to fight and then Allah says that they were driven out of their homes they were driven out of their homes without any right unjustly except that they say our Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَبِيَعُمْ وَلَا يَنْصُرَنَّ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَنْصُرُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِيٌ عَزِيزٌ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says immediately after that about permission to fight. He explains the wisdom behind that permission. He says that the permission is because had it not been that some people defended other people, in other words strong people defended weak people, then temples, and synagogues, and churches, and mosques would be destroyed. That this is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave permission for people to defend other people, in, order, in other words, to defend their religion. Because the verse comes down about religious persecution. That these people were being persecuted for their religion. They came to Abdullah ibn Umar in Sahih bukhari and, and they said to him, we want to hear some good news, so a good hadith. نَسْمَعُ مِنْكَ حَدِيثًا hasana. And one of them said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and fight them until there's no fitna. قَاتِلُهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تُكُونَ fitna. Until there's no fitna. And Abdullah ibn Umar said, do you know what fitna is? May your mother weep over you. Do you know what fitna is? And then he said, Fitna for us was being forced out of our religion. In other words, religious persecution. And this is why the Prophet was given permission to fight the mushrikeen, to stop them from forcing people to leave the religion. And he said, as for what you're doing today, fighting for political power, fighting for dominion, this is not what the Quran is talking about. The Prophet ﷺ said, if Muslims together, if they meet with their two swords, in Sahih Bukhari, if they meet with their two swords, both of them are in the fire. People during fitna are not called shuhada. You don't call people that die in fitna shuhada. This is according to the Muslims, the fuqaha, the ulama. In the hadith in al-Bukhari, لَا تَزَرُوا طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْ أُمَّةِ ظَاهِرِينَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ There will be continue to be a group of my ummah that is on the truth until the, the end of time. Imam al-Bukhari says, وَهُمْ أَهْلُ الْعِلْمِ In the same chapter, they are the people of knowledge. Allah says about the people going out, that not everybody should go out, there should be a group that stays home. Why? لِيَتَفَقَهُ فِي الدِّينِ In order to learn the religion, and then to warn them when they come back. To warn them what this religion is about, why we fight, what's the purpose of the fighting. Now you have in the Muslim Ummah, and I don't, you know, it's not my want to talk about politics in the, in the Jummah, because the Prophet ﷺ, I looked at all the khutbahs that were available, collected in a book, and I didn't find any khutbah where he talked about the political problems of his time. All of it was about rectifying the hearts, about having taqwa, 
about getting close to Allah. That's what he talked about. But he also had time with other people. And now we're in a time of great confusion. There's confusion. We have people in this country going overseas. It's hard to believe, but there's people going to join up, to join the Khilafah. We have people in England going to join the Khilafah. People from Muslim countries now going. We, there was a young Tamimi boy going from Riyadh. He was first year religious student. Goes online, says, come join the Khilafah. Here's the Caliph. Right? And so they go. It's a madness, complete insanity. It's unbelievable. The Prophet ﷺ said, How, what will you be like? Ma antum, what are you? He didn't even say man antum, ma antum. Like what are you without, because ma is used for no intellects. What are you? Ida marija dinukum, when your religion becomes confused. Wa sufika dima'akum, and bloodshed is everywhere. Zina, and then you have luxury on the other hand. You've got all these people in, indulging in their luxuries. Washaraful bunyan, and you building tall buildings. What are you? Like, what, what are you? Ma'antum. So, if you look at these ayahs where Allah gives permission to fight, permission was granted, it's an idhan, it's a rukhsa. Fighting is not something desirable. The Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih Bukhari, لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو Don't desire to meet the enemy. Don't desire that. This is a sickness in the heart. People that desire to go is a sickness in the heart. In Sahih Bukhari, in the chapter which is called the, the fitna التي تموج بعضها في بعض Fitna that comes like waves, one after another, just one after another. It comes like waves. It says that Khalaf ibn Hushab said, كانوا يستحبون الصحابة كانوا يستحبون أن يتمثروا بأبيات من القيس They used to recite jahli poetry When the fitan would come, they would recite jahli poetry What was what they would recite? الحرب أول ما تكون فتية تسعى بزينتها لكل جهولي حتى إذا اشتعلت وشبت ضرامها ولت عجوزا غير ذات حليلي they would recite the poem to remind each other. The fitna, when it first appears, it appears like a decked out beautiful woman attracting every young ignoramus. Every young ignoramus. Until the conflagration happens, war breaks out, and then they see it for what it is. An old hag no longer desirable. Nobody wants it. This is the disease of, of, of young men. The Prophet ﷺ, there's a chapter called Halaku Ummati Ala Ughaylimatin Sufaha. The destruction of my ummah at the hands of stupid young boys. Stupid young boys. These people are playing with fire, and this fire could break out. A conflagration, you know, once you get, once you get a, a, a bonfire, and, and, and you have dry grass everywhere, it takes over. Even the firemen here, they can't put out these fires. They have all the technology in the world. Once you start a fire, you know how hard it is to put out a forest fire when it's dry? And what do you think fitna is? Fitna is, is fire that tests gold. That's the meaning of fatana. Aranari yuftanun. On the fire. There, 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 in the, in the hellfire, ana nar yuftanun, dhuqu fitnatukum, taste your fitna. You want fitna? Dhuqu fitnatukum, taste it. But nobody wants to, nobody wants to follow the people of knowledge. That's the first thing. The people of knowledge have no voice anymore. It's just all these young boys out there on, on Google. That, that's who now uh, rules this religion. Young boys, not people that will spend 20 years to study the religion, to look at what the fuqaha say. Now it's just young boys. This is who runs our religion. This is who gives the fatwa now. And the ulama, when they speak, they say, oh, ulama sultan. You can go to the deserts of, of the Sahara. There's still some ulama there. There's not many left, but there's still some. They've never gone inside a palace. They've never spoken to anybody in political power. And you ask them what they think. What's the ruling of God in this? People that spent 30 years studying fiqh, mastering a tradition, mastering the Arabic language. Now you have people, we've got crucifixions because these idiots read the Quran and they say, well, there it is right there in the Quran. Crucify people. 
You open up the Quran for, for, for everybody and say, oh, here it is. Anybody can read the Quran. I know Arabic. I have a four-year degree from uh, Baghdad University. Imam Shafi'i studied 17 years. These people didn't speak about the religion. The Sahaba were afraid to say things. They were afraid to speak. Now, when after that, Allah says, Those who, when we give them tamkeen in the earth, what do they do? They establish prayer. And they take care of poor people. And they, they enjoin good and they forbid what's wrong. The Prophet said, how will you be when the ma'roof is munkar and the munkar is ma'roof? How will you be when people will see a wrong thing as a good thing and they'll see a good thing as a wrong thing? How will you be when, when they'll see compassion as weakness, mercy as weakness? The Prophet ﷺ was a merciful person. When Khalid ibn Walid, in Sahih al-Bukhari, when, when Khalid ibn Walid actually had prisoners and, and, and they, were, they were so confused they couldn't speak properly and then he had them killed, some of the men that were with him refused to kill them because لا تعطيني مخلوق في معصية الخالق They refused to kill the prisoners. They said, we're not going to do that. When they got back to the Prophet ﷺ, they told the Prophet what happened, that he killed the prisoners. The Prophet turned immediately to the Qibla, raised his hands and said, Oh Allah, I'm completely innocent of what Khalid has done. I'm completely innocent of what Khalid has done. Because why? They feed out of love of God, the, the, the orphan, the, 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 the indigent, the poor people, and the prisoner. The Prophet ﷺ took care of his prisoners. He, he was the best of people. Even 200 years ago in this country, 200 years ago, Benjamin Franklin can write in his autobiography, ever since Khalid was rebuked by Muhammad, Muslims have always treated their prisoners well. well now chopping off heads of people that go there to, to actually inform people about the atrocities that are taking place, this is, this, is how you, this is how you treat prisoners? And, and it's all just vengeance. It has nothing to do with Islam. These people have nothing to do with Islam. And I'll say it right here. They have nothing to do with Islam. These people have nothing to do with this religion. Now they're using these black flags because there's hadith about the black flags coming from Afghanistan at the, towards the end of time. But they don't know that there's actually two different black flags. There's the black flags of Bani Abbas, but then there's another group of black flags that we were warned against. Sayyidina Ali says, An Ali ibn Abi Talib, qali idha ra'aytum al rayat al sud, falzimu al ard wa la tuharriku aydiyakum wa arjurukum. Stay put. Why? Because it's fitna. Stay put. What do you do during fitna? You do what the Prophet ﷺ said. When the fitna comes, you stay in your house. You don't go out. The Prophet ﷺ said, That doing ibadah during fitna is like making hijra to me. Because his religion is not a religion of fitna. And civil strife, persecution, these Yazidis have been living there for centuries. The Christians, this is a testimony to the beauty of our religion that the Christian church of Syria and Iraq for centuries lived with their churches inviolable. They could worship God in their churches and they, didn't, they weren't afraid of the Muslims. And now they're running, they're fleeing. Sayyidina Ali said, then you will see these weak, insignificant people. Insignificant people. Insignificant people. These are not notables. They have no learning. There's no scholars amongst them. Insignificant people. Their hearts are like pieces of iron. And in a riwayah, لا رأفت ولا رحمة على عدوهم. They have no mercy with their enemies. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Man la yarham, la yarham. Even this poor mother 
asking for her child to be, and let me say something, just predicate this here. I'm not exonerating these neoconservatives that opened this door. All right, I'm not exonerating what this country did to the Iraqi people. All right, who opened the door of fitna? I'm not exonerating them, so I'm, I'm not talking, but I'm dealing with what we've got right now. That happened. Now we have another situation. We can play the blame game because that's Iblis's favorite game. That is his favorite game. Bima ghwaytani, la ghwiyannuhum ajma'in. That's Iblis. Our, our, our religion is Adam alayhi salam. He, he said, ظلمنا انفسنا. He didn't say, Iblis made me do it. Right? Because qasamuhuma Iblis. He, 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 he said, inni lakum minna nasihin. I'm giving you sincere advice. They believed him. They, they were like children, they were innocent, they believed Iblis, and they fell. He didn't say, oh Iblis, he swore an oath, we never thought he'd lie. They didn't blame Iblis, that's why he's Khalifa. That's why Adam is Khalifa, because he didn't do what Iblis did. Iblis blames God. You led me astray. So you can blame America, you can blame Israel, but if you, if you want to get to the metaphysical level, then we have to deal with our sins. How, why did they come? We sent them our servants. Those were the Babylonians. They weren't the people of Haq. They were sent to Bani Israel. Why? Because Bani Israel had deviated from the path. And so God sent them servants that would go into their houses, take their women, kill their men. Why? Because Ummati, Ummatum Marhuma, Ju'ila Adabuha fi Dunyaha. My Ummah is an is a, is, is a, a Ummah that has Rahmah because all of their punishment is here in this world, then what did he say? Fitanun. Was zalazilu. Was balaya. You look at the earthquakes in the Muslim world. When we have earthquakes, 10,000 people die. They have an earthquake here, three people die. This, this is what Allah said. That, that we're going to, the Prophet said, we will have fitan. When we deviate, fitna. Let them be warned. If you go against the, mess, the messenger, if you would go against his guidance, the Prophet said that, that when they gave bay'ah to him, Allah tu nazi al ahla amrah, that you don't go against the Sultan. The Prophet ﷺ said that. People now, they say, oh, those hadiths, they're just put there by people that wanted to calm people down. And so, Al Bukhari, none of these hadiths are sound. None of the things the ulama said for centuries. No, of course, in this enlightened age, we're going to reinterpret the whole religion, this revolutionary age where we get rid of all these evil doers and the pure, uh, the pure ummah is going to come. What is this? What's happened? This is, this is a state. But see, they have hearts like iron. Humas habadola. That's what he said. Humas habadola. They're the people of Dola. That's their name, Dola. They call them Daesh in the Arab world. <laughs> Dola to Islamia, right? They're the people of Dola. That wasn't even a word the Arabs used other than just to revolve something. They didn't use it for state at that time. They will not have any covenant. You can't trust them with anything that they say. They call to the truth, but they're not from the people of the truth. Why? Because in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, when Hudayfa, People were asking about evil. Sahih al-Bukhari, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, the people were asking about good. He wanted to ask about sharr, out of fear that he might see it. He said, Ya Rasulullah, kunna fi jahiliyatin wa sharr, fajana Allahu bihada khair. We were in jahiliyah and sharr, and then God brought this, this good to us. Is there any bad after this good? He said, Naam. And then he said, Is there any good after that bad? He said, Naam wa fihi dakhan. Yes, but it, it's going to be cloudy. It won't have the same purity. And he said, ma, ma ya Rasulullah. What, what's the cloudiness? He said, uh, People will guide with other than my guidance. You will know some things and you'll reject other things. And then he said, is there evil after that good? He said, na. Du'atun ara abwab an-nar. Man ajabuhum qadafu fi. The, those who, they're, they're callers on the doors of the hell. If you answer them, if you respond to their call, you will be flung into the hell. Hudayfa said, Sifhum lana ya Rasulullah. 
Describe them for us so we'll know them. Hum min jildatina. They're Arabs. They're like us. Min jildatina. They look like us. Yatakallamuna bi al-sinatina. They'll, they'll quote the Quran, they'll quote the Hadith. This, this is how the Prophet ﷺ described him, them. And then he said, ya Rasulullah? What do you command me to do at that time? He said, Ilzam jama'atul muslimin wa imamahum. Be with the jama'ah and the imam. Wa in lam yakun lahum jama'atu wa la imam. What if there's no jama'ah and no imam? Fa'atazal tilkil firaqa kullaha. He said, avoid all those sects. Even if you have to cling to the root of a tree with your teeth until death comes to you and you're on that. He didn't say, oh, He didn't say you have to establish the khilafa. But these people, they don't study. They, they're khawarij. And, and, and this media here is calling them Sunnis because they're killing Shia. They're not Sunnis. These aren't Sunnis. They're not Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. These are Ahlu Iblis. Fariqan Hada wa Fariqan Hakka alayhim al Dalala. One group was guided and another group Hakka alayhim al Dalala. Thabata alayhim al Dalala. In the hadith, then he says, Asma'uhum al Kuna. This is how you know them. And if you don't think these are accurate descriptions, Hudayfa said the Prophet got up in a khutbah and he spoke the whole day. He said every single fitna that would happen until the end of time. He described the leaders. He told us their names. He told us what would happen. And he said some of us could remember and others us couldn't. Every single fitna. So don't think these things weren't mentioned. Asma'ahum al-Kuna. Their names are Abu so-and-so and Abu so-and-so. They don't go by their real names. Asma'ahum al-Kuna. When nisbatuhum al-Qura. And, they, and they, they go back to towns, places. They don't go to tribes. Because the Arabs, they go by tribes. These people know. They go by places. Al-Baghdadi, Al-Ambari, Al-Juwaishi. All these, all these names of their towns that they're from. Al-Libi, Al-Musri, Al-Maghribi. They go back to places. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu because it has hukum al rafa and people can say it's a weak senate. It sounds pretty sound to me. وَشُعُورُهُمْ مِرْخَاتٌ كَشُعُورَ nisa. They have long hair, wearing it like women. Look at all the pictures of these guys with their long hair. Because <laughs> it's not that the Prophet ﷺ didn't have long hair, but it's no longer fashionable in the Arab world. Arabs don't wear their hair long, so that's a sign that you know them. Their hair is long. They'll start fighting amongst each other. <laughs> That's the nature. There's another troubling hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, سَتَكُونُ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الشَّامِ subyan. It begins with children playing in dar'a. And then he said that it'll just be after that one fitna after another. Kuluma sakana fitnatun hajat fitnatun ukhra. Every time it calms down in one place, it starts up somewhere else. In this, Ida Kharajat Raya Tasud, if you see the black flags, fa inna awalaha fitna, it begins with a fitna. Wa wasataha balala. And 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 the midst of it is delusion, misguidance, error. And it ends with atheism. Because that's what's going to happen. People, people start losing their faith. This is what happened to the Europeans. They had World War I and II. It was enough for them. They don't believe in God anymore. They were a profoundly religious civilization. Look at all the churches they built. People, get, people can't take it. That's so much. Where is God? The question is not where is God. It's where are we? That's the question. He's not asking about what he did. But we're going to be asking about what we did. Why aren't we following the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ? And in this hadith that Makhul relates, he says, Mali wali bani al Abbas, because they most of these they thought had to do with the Abbasids. But then he said, Shayya'u ummati, they split my ummah. Wa albasuhum thiyab al sawad. And they put black clothes on them. Albasuhum thiyab al nar. May God put clothes of fire on them. 
These people are khawarij. They're killing Muslims. They, 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 every single criteria. And don't be fooled by their piety. Don't be fooled by their piety because the Prophet ﷺ said, عِنْدَ صَرَاتِهِمْ تَحْقِرُونَ صَرَاتُهُمْ When you see them pray, you'll consider your prayer uh, insignificant. وَعِنْدَ صِيَامِهِمْ تَحْقِرُونَ صِيَامَكُمْ But he said, يَقْرَؤُونَ الْقُرَانِ وَلَا يَتَجَاوَزْ حَنَاجِرُهُمْ They'll recite the Qur'an, it won't go past their throats. The ulama said it means they won't understand it. They don't, because they don't have the tools. You can't understand the Qur'an without the tools. They won't understand it. And then he said, يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الدِّينَ Sahir Bukhari, يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الدِّينَ كَمَا يَمْرُقُ السَّحْمُ مِنَ الرَّمِيَةِ They will leave this religion like an arrow is shot out of a bow. And, and in a riwayah in Al-Bukhari, it says, يَخْرُجُ فِي أُمَّتِي And then the Rawi says, مَا قَالَ مِنْهَا They will come out amongst my ummah. And he didn't say from it, because they're not from him. These people are not from the Prophet ﷺ. They have nothing to do with the man who was sent as a mercy for all the world. And the fact that they're in any way, shape, or form associated with this religion is a grave tragedy. Muslims in this country have a big responsibility to get out there and educate people because these people are watching these newscasts and maybe there is some other agencies involved. I don't know because this, this age of fitin is all confusion. It's what the Prophet ﷺ said. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm not confused. I'm not confused. If you're confused, you haven't studied this religion. And if you think this has anything to do with the truth, you definitely haven't studied this religion. Because these people are shayateen. It's plain and simple. And, and undeniably, there's uh, these uh, bahiyya, you know, sacrificial lambs, like this 18-year-old boy who left Riyadh, who's been brainwashed to think that this religion is about hating other people. You know, because unfortunately we have certain sects in Islam now that teach that all kuffar are bad, even though the Qur'an clearly states that amongst them are good people, <laughs> amongst them are trustworthy people. Qur'an is a nuanced book. It's, it's not a simplistic book. It's not a black and white world. And then, يُخْرِجُ الْحَيِّ مِنَ الْمَيْتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيْتِ مِنَ الْحَيِّ from kufr comes iman, from iman comes kufr, that we're fluid by nature, humans are fluid. People are in one state one day, they're in another state the next day. Unfortunately, there's not many uh, scholars left in our ummah. Uh, there really isn't. Uh, but the few that are left, they all agree, they all say the same things. That whether they were trained in, in Afghanistan or Mauritania or Malaysia or Egypt or Iraq, if, if they were trained in the Senate tradition, they all say the same thing. They don't disagree. That's a, it's an amazing thing about this religion. But the sex outside of them, they disagree. <coughs> they have different opinions. And that doesn't mean that the scholars don't differ amongst them, but about certain things, they're, they're in agreement about. And one of them is that fitna is worse than, than killing. Fitna is worse than killing. Quran. Al-fitna akbaru min al-qatri. Civil strife is worse than killing itself. Just the fact that humans are filled with strife. Because shaitan, that's, that's what he wants to do, reduce us. He wants to prove that, that the angels in their question to God, are you going to place in the earth those who corrupt and shed blood? That's shed blood. That's what they ask. Is it going to, that, this is what they're going to do. The Prophet ﷺ said, you have wiggle room with your Lord as long as you don't shed blood. The Quran says that if you kill a believer, muta'ammidan, your, your, your reward is Jahannam. That's, that's the reward of killing a believer. And, and, and the Mu'ahid, they have rights. People have rights. These people have rights. These Syrian Christians, the, the Syrian, uh, all these people have rights. They're Mu'ahidun. They're supposed to be protected. And the Shia are Muslims. They're, they're not kuffar. They're Muslims. Just because he's a Shia doesn't give anybody a right to, to, to kill him or do anything. 
But these people don't care. We, I met a man in Turkey who was a Naqshbandi from Halab. He had welts on his back from the torture that they did with him. Why? Because he was an imam in a masjid that, where they did dhikr in a group. That's why he was tortured. And they were going to kill him. He escaped. They had a raid and, and, and a bomb fell and he got out and he fled to Turkey. We met him. I had lunch with him. That, that, that's the type of people we're dealing with. And then they've got all the women covered from head to toe. There's a khilaf. Niqab is not a, a, a fard. That's an opinion of, of, of a minority of the ulama. The majority don't say the face is not considered aura, but they force because they only one opinion, my opinion, one religion, my religion. What I say is the only way to understand this religion. So we're going we're, we're gonna to have to deal with this here because it's all started up again. It's all started up again. And don't think you can be comfortable in your homes, really. I'm telling you, I am telling you, do not think that you can be comfortable in your homes. Because we're, we're in a very precarious situation in the first place. These mosques, thank God we've got some social order here. Social order breaks down. People get fed up. You know, the Arabs say, watch out for uh, the Halim if he gets angry. People that don't get angry quickly, when they get angry, watch out. And now it's starting over again. They're, they're going to start bombing and again. Muslim, they're gonna be, innocent Muslims are killed in these things. And it just keeps these cycles of violence going. It doesn't stop. Because these people, have, they don't know what to do. All they know is to kill. That's all they know. Just like this group over here, that's all they know. In the hadith, they say they're Shi'aris, amit, amit, kill, kill. That's all they know. So, you know, we have to deal with it. But Muslims... We need to wake up. We need advocacy groups. We need, people need to support the, the groups that, that are out there, empower them. They need to be doing more work. I mean, I've been doing this 10 years. I feel like, I, you know, I, I, I just think, I went to all those places, all those talks, all those things, and it's just, we're back to square one. We're actually worse, as far as I can tell. This is worse than before 9-11. Even my father, who knows Islam, I've been telling about Islam for 30 years, he's like, is this Islam? You know, the cutting off heads, I guess it's in the Qur'an. So, back to square one, 30 years of, of da'wah. <laughs> you know, these people, I think they're going to have an excuse on Yom Al-Qiyam, all these people. As according to Imam al-Ghazali, what's our excuse? The Prophet Sallallahu you know, he said that the, 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 all the fitna comes from the ulama and the umara. That's where it comes from. The ulama, they don't speak out, they don't, or they, or they uh, sell their deen, right? And then the umrah, they, you know, but then also these, these political, these people that turned Islam into a political ideology to get power, you have to blame them as well. We're going to start the blame game, long list. <laughs> but in the end, we, <laughs> we have to say that, <laughs> right? You don't have mercy on us, forgive us. We're going to be from the losers. So this in the end, we have to call on Allah. In fact, the fitna in, in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that the only one that will be saved from it is the one that makes the dua of, the, of a drowning man. You have to make the dua of man da'a dua al-gharik fil bahri. The one that makes the la yanju minha illa man da'a dua al-gharik fil bahri. They won't have salvation unless you make the dua of a drowning man in, 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 in the ocean. So this is what we're up against. But I mean, I, I feel compelled to talk about this. I feel compelled to, you know, we have some young people that think somehow this has anything to do with Islam. You need to educate these young people, young, young people filled with zeal. They want to do something. And, and they're fed up with seeing Palestinians massacred. Muslims massacred, nobody cares. They don't care here. They talk, they talk about the Christians in Iraq. What about all the Muslims? Far more Muslims have suffered at the hands of these people than, than Christians. They don't talk about the Muslims. Muslims, they, we don't mean anything. And that's, that's the other half of the equation, is that they, they see that there's no mercy in the hearts of these people, so they feel compelled to show no mercy. But that's not our religion. That's another religion. That's not our religion. Our Prophet did not 
uh, he lay, lay it fat siya bisiya. He didn't repel a wrong with another wrong. Lakin bil hasana. And he said, follow up a bad thing with a good thing, tamhuha, and it will obliterate it. That's, that's his religion. But that's a hard religion. It's a lot easier to get angry. It's a lot more difficult to, to do that. Allah maqfilna wa rahmna wa tub alayna, ya Allah. Ya Rahman ar Rahmin, Anta ar Rahman ar Rahimin. Allahumma wafiq al Hujjaj, inshallah, aminhum fi Hajjihim. Allahumma barak fi Hajjihim. Allahumma jaluf Hajjim mabrooran wa sa'in mushkooran wa dhamman maqfooran wa wa'duhum ila awtanihim salimin ghanimin. Allahumma jalal, inshallah, bar Mecca min al Awbiya wa min al Mikrobat wa min hadir amrad al Latin intasharat fi hadir ayam. Allahumma wafiqhum wa جعلهم أصحى يا رحم الرحمين في حجهم اللهم أمنا في أوطاننا وأمن نساءنا وأولادنا يا رحم الرحمين أنت أرحم الرحمين اللهم إن ليس لنا حيلة وليس لنا ليس لنا قدرة نحن عاجزون معترفون بعجزنا اللهم أمنا يا الله اللهم أمن المسلمين اللهم أمنا في فلسطين وفي الشام وفي ليبيا وفي مصر وفي العراق وفي أفغانستان وفي شيشان وفي فلبين وفي في 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 كشمير وفي اليمن وفي الخليج وفي المغرب وفي الجزائر في هذه الأماكن وفي تركيا اللهم أمن الأتراك من الكيد ومن المكر ومن الشر يا الله اللهم أمن الملايزيين اللهم أمن أوطاننا يا أرحم الراحمين ما عندنا لا حيلة لنا ما عندنا شيء ما عندنا شيء عاجزون معترفون بعجنا we have nothing يا الله nothing we only have you that's all we have we have nothing we only have you, Subhanak. Amen, Nabika. We believe in you. Qulna la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Aghfir lana wa rahamna. Adi dhunub and tajarat bi ummatina fi kulli makan. This sinfulness everywhere, Ya Allah. Your Prophet warned us, and we didn't listen to his advice. La tuakhidna bima fa'da sufaha umilna. Don't take us to account for what these fools amongst us do, Ya Allah. اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وتب علينا يا رحم الرحيم إن إنك قدوة قول أخلاق إن الله وملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد اللهم ارحم أمة محمد اللهم ارحم أمته هذه أمته يا الله هذه أمة المصطفى يا الله اللهم ارحمنا يا رب اللهم ارحم أمة محمد اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا ظلمنا أنفسنا فإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر لنا ورحمنا وتب علينا إن الله يقول إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيم الصلاة لذكره إن شاء الله